Hello everyone, my name is Leila Asadi. I'm a PhD candidate from Arizona State University, but I conducted my research in Michigan, in the state of Michigan in different cities and different locations, but I mostly uh, focused on <clears throat> Dearborn, uh, where is the place of many of uh, Syrian refugee families that they came here to the United States uh, after 2011 uprising in Syria. I conducted my research with Syrian refugee women to have a sense of their challenges and problems after resettling in the state of Michigan. And uh, since 2017, I've been active on the, on the ground, working with different organizations, community organizations like ACCESS, and also working with U University of Michigan to conduct research um, researchers in different um, in different areas like uh, other cities like Lansing or Grand Rapids. Um, so I wrote a pa my paper um, about the living conditions of Syrian refugee families and I published it and our uh, RIT project helped me, assisted me to pop and publish it on their websites. I would appreciate if you go and read it and then let me to have your uh, feedback. Um, so um, the main location in Michigan where I focused my research and activities is Dearborn. Uh, the city of Dearborn is a place that these days is struggling with a high number of COVID cases because it is dense and is a place of low income fa families, some parts of Dearborn, they're low income families, and then there and then also it's close to the uh, to Detroit, the city of Detroit, where um, with the pandemic, uh, pandemic headed harder than other areas in the state of Michigan. According to the Michigan Disease Surveillance System, it's called MDSS, which is updated, the data updated on the websites uh, three times a week. So far, more than 121,000 cases have been reported, and from this number, almost 6,070. 723 deaths related COVID in, this, uh, in three counties, uh, Wayne, Mecom, and Oakland counties um, uh, have been reported. And um, obviously, um, like other states in the United States, African-American community have been so vulnerable more than other racial groups. But when it comes to Arab-American population, the um, Michigan um, MDSS website shows that 5% of our population got infected with COVID, which from them 2% have died. I'm not sure, honestly, how they gathered information, this data, and then how much this data can reflect on can reflect on the reality of uh, on the ground or the actual numbers in um, in Arab American community in Michigan because as you know historically Arab Americans they have been certified as white while their problems and their cultural their traditions are very different than white category um, so especially when it comes to <clears throat> their genetics and when it comes to health problems they they are very distinguished uh, distinct from the white uh, population um, when it when it comes to um, uh, underlying conditions related to that you know increase the possibility of getting infected by covid virus our american community studies show that they have high they are among the high risk population high risk population with underlying health conditions such as diabetes obesity and cardiovascular vascular diseases that are considered as underlying conditions for covid infection that's why i'm saying that this information that provided in the website um, i'm not sure how does it reflect the reality in terms of community organizations, activities, community organizations, activities, I am mostly able to provide a brief on access as one of the uh, very well established organizations that I have been in contact with closely because of my research and because of continuing working with this organization. Access or Arab Community Center for Economic and Social Services is very well um, established organization that they um, they been very 
and it has been very active on the ground for awareness raising and service provision with the community members since the early days of pandemic. For instance, they started running testing stations for health workers and then you know it started very very quickly and by end of the day and, and you know the early days of um, COVID hit the state and later they extended their services to the entire population in Dearborn and Detroit by having mobile clinics in the cities and that encouraged people to, to take COVID test. Access also has been distributing thousands of free meals and to help with the help of many Arab American uh, owned businesses that they are donating and also they are donating medical supplies and protective gears to hospitals. And also they assisted people to apply for un unemployment and basic needs support. Another uh, community organization is Muslim Family Services that they also have mobile uh, food pantries for the community members. In general, many of the organization have been involved in charitable activities that historically are, an, are considered as an old tradition Muslim community. When we talk about the struggles that these community organizations face here can say that the main struggle is obviously keeping the community safe. Many of refugee families, at, at least those population, that population that I have been in contact with, they are in, uh, families are big sized and they have at least five or six children. This makes the following CDC guidelines on, in terms of sanitary habits, if not possible, but difficult to practice or follow. The other struggle is food insecurity among low-income residents, moreover child care and child education is another one that um, I'm sure that many other populations across the United States and across the world they are challenging with, they have this challenge with. So when, when all these children, they don't go to school, some of the activities that they started with uh, again with access and other organization that they are um, you know they provide some educational programs on the ground to fill a little bit the gaps of uh, you know education for instance they have remote learning for children in among this uh, low-income families and also domestic violence that we have witnessed and we um, we have known that increase that has increased uh, because of COVID. Also, they I know that they have some activities related to that. They expanded their resources, they expanded their services to to increase of uh, COVID related uh, violence. But how uh, to answer this question? That how the organization and um, uh, you know this community organiz organizers use research or evidence to affect practice, as far as I know, the Center for Arab American Research, which is part of ACCESS, is at the University of Michigan Dearborn, and they have collaborated closely with ACCESS on the ground to find the best practices, practices and experiences, and in order to use them in the research or conduct research-based activities. These are the brief that I, can't, I could present here in this um, in this video and then I'm uh, looking forward to hearing from you your feedbacks and your experience in other parts of um, the United States or other cities across the world. Thank you so much for listening to me and uh, looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you.